Musicians don't exactly have the most dangerous jobs on the planet, but the deaths of musicians are often highly publicized and deeply mourned among the wider cultural community. Different disasters have taken some of the best musicians away from us far too soon. These musicians died at their peaks. By 14, Aaliyah Dana Houghton, known professionally as just Aaliyah, had released her first album produced by R. Kelly. Age Ain't Nothing But A Number sold more than a million copies. In 1996, she released her second album, One In A Million, which sold twice as many copies as her first. She soon branched out into modeling and acting. She just released her third album, Aaliyah, when she was killed in a plane crash in the Bahamas in 2001 while filming the video for her single, Rock The Boat. Eight other passengers, including a close friend of Aaliyah's, were killed in the crash. Rolling Stone remembered her as a driven, intelligent, and unusually sweet and gentle spirit. Selena Quintanilla Perez was one of the most prolific Hispanic musicians and celebrities ever, and is generally credited for bringing Latin music genres into the wider American mainstream. Born in Texas in 1971, Selena found fame in the world of Latin music in 1989 with the release of her self-titled debut album. Her second LP, Entre a Mi Mundo, was number one on the Billboard Mexican Albums chart for eight consecutive months. In 1995, as the 23-year-old Selena was yet to release her first English-language album, she was shot dead by Yolanda Saldivar. Saldivar had recently been fired as the head of Selena's fan club for embezzling funds. Within two years of her death, the New York Times was comparing Selena to Marilyn Monroe and Elvis, and her 2017 Hollywood Walk of Fame ceremony drew the largest ever crowd for one of those events. Dwayne Allman had one of the most famous names in rock and blues. As lead guitarist of the Allman Brothers Band, he achieved considerable critical acclaim with the 1971 album at Fillmore East. That year, Rolling Stone reported the whole band took their first real vacation in more than two years. Duane had been celebrating the birthday of the wife of Barry Oakley, the band's bassist. On his way home, his motorcycle flipped when he swerved to avoid a truck. He died after three hours of surgery at a nearby hospital. Nearly 300 people attended his funeral. Before he emerged as one of the most popular and era-defining rappers of the 1990s, Tupac Shakur bopped around on the fringes of the hip-hop world for years, serving as a roadie and occasional vocalist for Humpty Dance Group Digital Underground. In 1991, Tupac broke through as a solo artist with the stark and sad single Brenda's Got a Baby. By 1993, he had one hit after another, some of them vividly painted pictures about an often difficult life in the inner city, some of them boastful party jams. When Shakur was gunned down in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas in September 1996, the 25-year-old star had reached a career milestone just two months earlier. His double A-side single, How Do You Want It, California Love, had hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Virtually any list of the greatest rock guitarists of all time will rank Jimi Hendrix near or at the top. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame called Hendrix the most gifted instrumentalist of all time. That legend stems from a mere four years in the spotlight. Hendrix found his first taste of success in 1966 in England, where he took Purple Haze and The Wind Cries Mary into the top 10 with his band The Jimi Hendrix Experience. Hendrix provided the soundtrack for the acid-dropping counterculture of the hippie 60s. Scarcely a year after his landmark appearance playing the Star-Spangled Banner at Woodstock, Hendrix was dead. A barbiturate overdose caused him to choke on his own vomit. He was just 27 years old. Buddy Holly's death was so shocking and tragic that it inspired Don McLean's American Pie, a song that equated the deaths of Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. Richardson in a February 1959 plane crash with the death of rock and roll. Holly was absolutely huge, ranking near Elvis Presley in terms of popularity and influence. He arguably filled the void when Presley dropped out of music for a while to join the military. Holly was in the middle of a tour thrilling crowds in towns across the country with jangly, catchy hits including That'll Be The Day, Peggy Sue, and Not Fade Away when he died in a plane crash. He'd already scored seven top 40 hits at the time of his death, just two years into his career. Trained in classical guitar, Randy Rhodes applied those classical techniques to heavy metal music. When he was barely out of his teens, Rhodes played on Quiet Riot's first two Japan-only releases in the late 1970s. He left, but soon connected with the biggest metal idol of all, Ozzy Osbourne. Rhodes' hard-charging guitar work served as an ideal counterpoint to Osbourne's vocals. He played on Osbourne's first two solo albums, Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman. After a 1982 show in Knoxville, Tennessee, an air conditioner broke on the band's bus, so it stopped next to an airstrip. 
Bus driver Andrew Icock, also a pilot, thought it might be fun to sneak aboard a plane and fly it. On his second trip, he took Rhodes and makeup artist Rachel Youngblood along. Icock thought it would be hilarious to buzz the tour bus, but he accidentally clipped the bus and crashed the plane. All three people on board died, including Rhodes, who was barely 25. What set Jim Croce apart from other guitar-toting folk singers of his era was that he remained loyal to the classic folk sound. Croce showed off his chops on a small 1966 release called Facets and 1969's Croce, a joint album with his wife Ingrid. Croce wouldn't find a big audience until he signed with ABC Records and scored two smash hit albums in 1972 and 1973, You Don't Mess Around with Jim and Life and Times. The latter includes what's probably his best known song, the number one hit Bad Bad Leroy Brown. At age 29, Croce died in a plane crash in September 1973. His gut-wrenching single about the fleeting nature of life, Time in a Bottle, topped the Hot 100 soon after his death. Rapper Mac Miller, born in Pittsburgh as Malcolm McCormick, was in the spotlight for less than a decade. He released his 2010 mixtape KIDS at 18. In 2011, his first studio effort, Blue Side Park, topped the charts. His status as an up-and-coming star was solidified further with singles including Self Care, Loud, and The Way, a collaboration with then-girlfriend Ariana Grande. By 2018, Miller was hugely famous, but he suffered in his personal life. In May 2018, he both broke up with Ariana Grande and ran his car into a utility pole. Miller struggled with depression and substance abuse. He was found unresponsive by a friend at his California home in September 2018 and was pronounced dead. Authorities determined the cause of death to be an overdose of the painkiller fentanyl mixed with cocaine. After releasing songs and albums on SoundCloud beginning in 2014, XXX Tentacion, born Jesse Onfroy, dropped his first official single, Look At Me, in 2016. His first two full-length non-SoundCloud albums captured a huge audience, charting at number two and number one, respectively. That's all before he turned 21. XXX Tentacion had a troubled and disturbing personal life. In 2016, he assaulted a romantic partner and threatened to cut out her tongue. He did it again when he believed she was being unfaithful. When she told the rapper she was pregnant, he allegedly beat her, threatened to kill her, and locked her in an apartment. She escaped after two days of captivity. The case was never resolved because in June 2018, XXX Tentacion was fatally gunned down in Florida. By that time, he'd charted 30 songs, and there was legitimate buzz he could have received a posthumous Best New Artist nomination at the 2019 Grammy Awards. Songwriter and guitarist Jeff Buckley boasted a voice that was ethereal, sensual, and soulful. It propelled his one and only studio album, Grace, to critical acclaim and multiple Best of the Year lists. Released in 1994, it didn't really hit big until 1995, thanks to standout singles including Last Goodbye, and his definitive, devastating cover of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Rolling Stone and the MTV Video Music Awards singled out Buckley as one of the best new artists of the year. The 30-year-old Buckley seemed on the cusp of superstardom in May 1997. In Memphis to work on his second album, he went swimming in the Mississippi River, fell under the surface, and didn't come back up. His body was recovered a week later. With her beehive hairdo and vintage outfits, Amy Winehouse was a mid-2000s throwback to the early 1960s. She dazzled crowds with her powerful bluesy voice, slick production by superstar Knob Turner Mark Ronson, and often dark personal lyrics. She sang from experience on her best-known song, the number 9 hit, Rehab. Winehouse cleaned up at the 2008 Grammys. The singer took home three out of the four biggest awards of the night, Record of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. But Winehouse never kicked the substance abuse that led to her most famous song. In July 2011, the 27-year-old singer died of alcohol poisoning. Leonard Skinner defined the style of 1970s Southern rock. The band is best known for the genre's unofficial theme song, Sweet Home Alabama, and one of the most epic rock songs ever, Freebird. The band's sound had gelled and its popularity was peaking when it released its fifth album, Street Survivors, in October 1977. Skinner boarded a charter flight after a concert in Greenville, South Carolina, bound for the next gig in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Somewhere over Mississippi, the plane ran out of fuel and crashed. Lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, backup singer Cassie Gaines, assistant road manager Dean Kilpatrick, and the pilots all died. The rest of the band and crew survived, although injured, and temporarily split up. 
The surviving band members reunited in 1987 with Van Zant's younger brother Johnny as their new singer. DJs are the rock stars of the 2010s. Among the most famous and popular of the musicians who made EDM a mainstream musical genre was Sweden's own Tim Bergling, known professionally as Avicii. Avicii translated and distilled his live sound into a few hit singles including Levels, You Make Me, I Could Be The One, and especially Wake Me Up, a number 4 smash on the Billboard Hot 100. Avicii suffered from health problems, including pancreatitis, which he attributed to excessive drinking. At age 24, he had his appendix and gallbladder removed. He soon stopped doing live gigs because they were too physically rigorous. By spring 2018, the 28-year-old DJ was gone, reportedly as a result of suicide. Nirvana combined elements of punk rock with hard rock to help popularize a new kind of commercially viable but artistically vital music, alternative rock. Chief songwriter and artistic visionary Kurt Cobain wrote lyrics that were both cryptic and voiced a deep cynicism for mainstream society with songs including Smells Like Teen Spirit, In Bloom, and All Apologies. The band's breakout album Nevermind ultimately moved about 10 million copies. It knocked Michael Jackson's Dangerous out of the number one spot on Billboard's album chart. When the group taped its episode of MTV Unplugged in late 1993, it was legitimately the biggest band in the world. Tragically, just a few months later, the severe depression that had long consumed Cobain claimed him. The 27-year-old rock star took his own life at his Seattle home in April 1994. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK.